What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Garage Gang Podcast. With me, as always, I got Mr. Kenny Knudsen, Mr. Aaron Gutierrez. We are not in the garage today. We actually have a little makeshift uh, yeah. studio here in Kenny's living room. But uh, it, it, it is pretty badass. But uh, joining us today is uh, the starting shortstop for the Cal Poly baseball team, Mr. Brooks Lee. What's going on, man? What's up, Brooks? Not much. How's everyone doing? All good. All good. Doing well, brother. Just Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, man. Thank welcome. you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we had your dad on um, like... Last year? I don't know. Yeah, was, probably last year. It was around this, around this time yeah, last year. Um, that was pretty cool. It was, it was nice to be able to like learn a little bit about the poly program yeah. and, and what he's done there. So that was that was a pretty cool interview. Yeah, he's... Uh, he never really does uh, media stuff, but that's uh, you guys lucked out on him for getting him uh, to do that. Yeah, yeah that was pretty I cool. I felt lucky too. He was he was having a good old time talking to us. <laughs> um, so you grew up in Slow. Um, talk, you know, talk, tell us about what it's like. What was it like growing up here? Um, you know, just having your dad as you know a baseball coach, being like a mentor to you. Um, for slow, I really enjoy living here. It's, um, it's like, it's like paradise for me. Yeah. I'm a surfer and I love being by the beach. Um, so it's kind of a place I never wanted to leave growing up. Um, a lot of people from my high school like to go elsewhere. Um, and then when they come back, they're like, oh, I really miss this place. And it's when you kind of figure out that you want to stay here. Um, but my dad and, uh, his whole family has stayed in San Spisbo. Um, and so I love it here and, uh, I'm, uh, pretty, I'm pretty spoiled to live here for yeah, sure. Absolutely. And, and, uh, for my dad, I mean, it's the, uh, greatest thing I could do is play for him. And, um, I have the utmost respect for him no matter what day it is. I mean, uh, in high school, I was kind of, I was a brat. So, I mean, there wasn't as much of a we all connection are. that we had, um, <laughs> it was mostly baseball, but. Uh, kind of when I got here and I matured a little bit, that's when I really, um, it kind of hit home that I enjoy playing for him. And um, I always say that I probably wouldn't be where I am today without him. I especially wouldn't have the skill set. Yeah. it's. I mean, you're pretty lucky to have a pretty damn successful Division One coach yeah. as your dad, yeah. you know. That's a, that's a pretty <laughs> damn good um, starting point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the other so like I got a barn at my house, which is a batting cage, and an iron mic in How there. Cool. And I mean, he did it right for sure. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I he, got the he's long, been, long end of the stick on that one. He's been grooming you for a while. Let's yeah. just say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, we mentioned obviously you grew up in Slow, the Central Coast, and it's definitely we live where people vacation. It's paradise. I mean, uh, do you have any other interests? Uh, growing up other than baseball that or was it just baseball um i kind of i mean i like basketball um i really wanted to play tackle football growing up but i wasn't allowed to yeah uh, was <laughs> he was kinda, grooming yeah. you <laughs> yeah, my, but neither of my parents wanted me to yeah uh but yeah that's something i wish i could have at least tried out uh i got slow feet so there's nothing i can do other than probably be a quarterback but uh, or just an undersized tight end. I don't really yeah. know. But <laughs> well, how tall are you? Uh, yeah, I definitely. Um, oh, I'm six two. So. Oh yeah, definitely. That's not that I'm undersized. Six two. I don't really know yeah. who I am, but might be like six one. <laughs> yeah. Who needs six the, two with boots on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> who needs football, yeah, man? Spikes. You picked the right sport. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I liked. I started surfing my freshman year of high school, um, and then. That's basically the only other thing I do outside of baseball. Uh, I like to swim. Uh, and then basketball was probably the primary thing that I did That's other cool. than baseball growing up. Yeah, definitely. Did you play um, basketball in high school too? Uh, I played uh, my freshman year and then I stopped after that. I, <laughs> I fractured my spine uh, oh, uh, near high school. Yeah. So I couldn't really do anything for about nine months. So I just. And I came back and I was super fat. I just like, I was, there's no shot I was gonna. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but get it's back. all good. You had it to worked back out. In a little so. bit of shape. <laughs> okay, so obviously you you went to Slow High, right? Yeah. 
So what was it like going to Slow High? And uh, tell us kind of about your uh, your baseball experience there. Uh, I really like Slow High. Uh, and I really like playing baseball there too. So uh, I was super uh, lucky. We had seven Division One commits my wow. freshman year of high school. Um, and then just – or sorry, not Division One, but college commits. Yeah. Um, and I just uh, – I really enjoyed playing for uh, all three of my coaches, um, and I just, I think I, uh, I mean, I always fell in love with baseball, but high school baseball is like something that you really, uh, you really enjoy because you're with certain guys, and they're like your brothers, and yeah. you're with them every day, go to lunch with them, then you practice, and regardless of their skill set, like, you like them a lot, um, but I, yeah, it's just, I like slow high, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of people there. I think my, I think there was like 1400 students or something like that, uh, when I was there, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. I always skip school cause, uh, uh, Cooper Benson, uh, his mom was a counselor and she would always just write us notes and we were just messing around in school time. Like I, I was so spoiled. That's like, <laughs> that's legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at people in class. I'm like, Oh, that sucks. Like something like that. I really, yeah, I really enjoyed so high for all the reasons. And I'm not a school, yeah. I'm not a very good student, and I choose to be that way. I don't, but uh, I think uh, it was good enough for me. So You're, you do good enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's all yeah. I care about. Yeah. I skip <laughs> Shit, when I skipped school, it was way more cutty than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had our had our uh, counselor chase us down on a on a golf cart and shit. <laughs> <laughs> our counselors want us let us do it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's legit. Yeah. It was hard for me to sneak away because I had a '67 Mustang, so that thing was loud as yeah. hell, really? and you could hear me coming from a mile away. So it was like, and, did, uh, well, and they always knew who it was if I was leaving. Like, oh, really? I'm the only one like that in the whole parking lot. You hey, know? Ken, did Aaron leave right now? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so throughout your high school career, you had three varsity seasons and just kind of was looking up these stats and was just really flabbergasted, uh, batted 437 total, 122 hits, 28 doubles, four triples, six home runs, 78 RBIs, 630 slugging percentage, and a 487 on base percentage. Absolutely phenomenal numbers. And I will say I was, I, I definitely had the privi- privilege to watch yeah. you your senior year. So yeah. um, I was the coach of the freshman team. And yeah, I know. It's good to see you again. Yeah, I know, man. Good to see you too. And um, it, it was just crazy. And I just remember, like, practicing when you guys had your first home game and there's, like, people watching you in the, in the hitting cage, in the batting cage. And I'm uh, like, who are these guys? And I was just, you know, I was talking to one of the other coaches, and he's like, oh, those are scouts. I go, oh, they must be yeah. coming to check me out. Then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like – but just having watching being able to watch you uh, and cooper was just an awesome experience thank you appreciate it hey, yeah how how was what was it like you know just going about your workout your bat you know you're in the batting cage or you're taking bp you know out in the field and to have like a bunch of other eyes on you that are nowhere expecting you to do or you know you're in a sense working for your future or putting your first yeah. step forward what's that kind of like man cuz i was thinking about it right myself and I was like, damn, if I had all those eyes and I was in the batting cage, it'd just be really weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was really weird at the start. Um, yeah. I wasn't – I'd always been a good uh, player and slow. Um, but I never really had the success like in travel ball. And I always like had a bunch of players that were better on me than my team. Um, and I just – but every time I came back to slow, that's when I kind of dominated. But I really um, – it's pretty like eye opening just because there's so many people on you. You kind of have to take a step back and understand like it is like your future. But like I, I want to play this game to have fun, and that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, and it's just the more people are watching you, it's kind of a privilege that you get to have. It shouldn't be something that um, can just harm your harm your play. But I, uh, I'm pretty fortunate to have all those people watch me in high school and. It's something I need to go through, especially if I was going to go to college, just to play in front of people that came to see you. Right. Great answer. 
Yeah, that right? Was, that, was yeah, that, was that was a great answer. That was a great answer. I would have been like, no, nah, it sucked, man. I was just trying to have my <laughs> no, have my batting but, practice and some so freaking – The first couple times, you're just so yeah. nervous. But, but yeah. you're right. You know, you're. this is what you're working for, for people yeah. to watch you play, you know, in the future. So it's, you know, you better get used to it starting now. Yeah. You yeah, know, exactly. if you're going to be a top prospect such as yourself right now. But, yeah, man. So I got I got a question. Who's your favorite baseball team? Good question. I don't know. Whoa! Yeah, so I used to like the Yankees growing up. Uh, Most and then when Gary G retired, I just yeah. Well, I'm really happy you didn't go with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I've actually followed more baseball in like past three days than I have like forever. Yeah, like, yeah. Since I got to college for sure, but uh, yeah, I like the Yankees. Uh, yeah. Cool. But then uh, I don't have a favorite team anymore. It's just I really like them because of Jeter. Yeah, I see a lot of people. That that's the way a lot of yeah. people are, especially our age is uh, thirty. We're, we're all thirty. We're born in ninety because right when we're starting to like really get a sense of of baseball, MLB on TV. I mean, the nineties, mid nineties to the late nineties, the Yankees 96? were the, the Yankees were winning. Yeah, we're, we're winning. You know, yeah. every World Series. You know what I mean? And you know, everyone started liking. Yeah, them. no, that was the I reason. Stayed I stayed a Dodger I, fan, so uh, <laughs> that was the reason I didn't like them. Yeah, it was because they were. I always saw them win, and I'm like, a lover or a hater, you know? but they're the but most popular team. You can't not like Jeter. I feel like yeah. he's the one yeah. guy you just kind of gotta. He's kind of he's kind of up in his own category. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Derek Jeter, number two. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you kind of talked about your dad's influence on your um, on your baseball life, but like, you know. The rest of your family's into baseball too, right? That it's yeah. it's a family affair. So what did oh, that yeah. just kind of you were just kind of born into it, and there was no no way you weren't gonna play baseball type <laughs> deal. Yeah, oh. I, I talked about that a couple of times. So like, I always like growing up, I'd always be like pissed because I wasn't doing well. Because I like as a kid, I wasn't very good. Uh-huh. Uh But I was just like. I just get pissed, tell my dad, like, I want to quit baseball so bad, like, all this stuff. And he's like, really? Like, go ahead and quit. Like, and you're just going to come back. And, like, I never quit. And, uh, like, I'm thankful for it, especially. But, um, yeah. I mean, regardless, I would have been able to do whatever I wanted to do. Um, and that's just, that's it. I, I would have definitely had to do something in sports, so because. I like, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to go to school for that one. stuff like that, so. Yeah, well, it's because yeah, I, I got yeah, kids, uh, I got kids, and I can tell you right now, I was like, well, they're going to, they may not want to play the sports that I played or I grew up, you know, yeah. liking, but just do some kind of sport. Just, yeah. Sport. Yeah. yeah. But I, uh, no, nah, he never, it wasn't like a push you to like play the sport. It was like, I'm going to play all sports and. I worked on baseball the most, so that's I became more deserving to play that sport than any other. Yeah. But yeah. I got you. Plus you had vast knowledge to yeah. fall back on. Because sure. <laughs> yeah. your uncles your uncles were drafted as well, right? I read it on the Cal Poly the athletic site thing and I was like said your uncles were drafted, yeah. correct, by the Giants? Uh, Uncle Terry, he's the second or he's the middle brother in the family. He was yeah. drafted in 1971, 19th pick Ooh. overall. Damn. Wow. Damn. Yeah, and then a family uh, tree for to the sure, Giants. Man. And then my Uncle Mike was, uh, I'm not sure what round, but he also signed with the Giants. And then my dad um, signed with the Mariners. Yeah, so, that's, that's so how, cool. how are you not a Giants fan growing up? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, just, well, I mean, I support your decision yes. either way, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's watching, very good. I saw a game one of the World Series, uh, I think in 2002. Two. Remember they played the Rangers, 2000, 2010. 2010. Oh, wow. So long ago. I still got the lantern for the tickets, so. though. Oh, that's cool. uh, that's yeah. sick. Yeah. Um, I like the Giants. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's just when you play so much baseball, you don't really watch that much baseball. Right. I got you. Yeah, my favorite World Series with the Giants was in 02 when they played the Angels. Oh, okay. I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> He's our resident Giants <laughs> fan. We're both Dodger fans. I'm just talking shit. But oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, so speaking of the Giants, um, in 2019, you got drafted by the Giants. Yeah. In the 35th round. What was that like? Uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. just sitting 
have your name called. It wasn't something that I thought was going to happen. My dad, I'll tell you this, my dad told me I got drafted the day after I got drafted and was like, oh, he was on, we were on the phone and right before he hangs up, he's like, oh yeah, you got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was probably like, yeah, because I got you for a couple years now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I never uh, I never knew until the day after. And I'm like, so how come that phone call didn't come to me? If they're yeah, like, oh, right. to your advisor. I was like, oh, whatever. I mean, it was, not, it was something I was proud of for sure. But yeah, I, I so, was supposed to be in the first two rounds. Um, hopefully, like the latter, like the last half of this first round. But. I just ended up taking my name out of the draft for a good decision. And of course, yeah. I, uh, so I just, ever since I made the decision, it was like a Sunday, Sunday night, I made a decision. Um, and that's just, yeah, yeah. that's where I'm here now. So was yeah. it, was the decision based on just you wanting to go play for your dad at Polly or was it more, a little deeper better than draft, that? Better draft status overall, probably. Yeah, that's, uh, there's yeah. a couple. So, like, you can think of it as, like, the financial or... But that wasn't... Like, I never worried about the money. Uh, right. I mean, I'm fortunate to come from a family that's doing good. And so I never really had the... My outlook on it was that it doesn't matter how much money. It's whether I want to go now or... I want to go later, but the main decision why is because I want to pay for my dad. Um, right. I, you can add, like, I can get more mature in college and time management. Uh, I don't think I was uh, mature enough to go out there uh, as a 17-year-old. Um, but, yeah, basically just my dad. And I mean, I really love slow, and I love being by the beach, and I I mean, I would take yeah. that for three more years. For Absolutely, sure. yeah. Well, and you grew up a obviously, problem. obviously yeah. a huge Polly fan because your dad, yeah, you know, yeah. coached. So yeah, I like. I'm like a big fan of Cal Poly. I was a big fan of Cal Poly baseball. I didn't. I mean, the school. That's not something that was really that important to me because uh, I always, I always thought in the long run, if I bet on myself and I can make a career in baseball, um, then I won't. I don't want to have to rely on school. Yeah, so, right. It's just, in my all my eggs in one basket absolutely you know what though it's funny because you hear the ones that are like end up being truly great that's like the answer they have they're like you know hey i just said i didn't want to have a plan b my i have plan a and that's it it's i'm gonna be a baseball player yeah i'm gonna make it work somehow and that's all that matters to me i also like how he said he was said he wasn't mature enough yeah, yeah. i'll be playing it simple he shit man he, yeah. You can stay home too in, in your home area, do a little surf on the side, and, and get better at baseball. You know, exactly. under people, under to, people who know yeah. how to. Yeah, yeah. That was the biggest reason. Just as I, yeah. like, whenever I have interviews and stuff, I always praise the team, but I praise my dad a lot yeah. more because, I mean, there, I was taught how to work hard. I was taught how to be efficient with everything I do, and yeah. uh, it all led up to being a high prospect. I really, I mean, I have my own experiences that are outside of baseball and um, <laughs> that are in baseball too without my dad, but right. I, I'm nowhere without him. That's yeah. what I believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I got to ask, I know that I know there wasn't really any other school in the running, but what other schools were interested in you coming out of slow high? Um, I had some Pac-12 schools. Okay. Uh, I got a couple full rides from – schools over there and then I really I like as a freshman in high school yeah. like in my health class I'd always just be looking at colleges and stuff um you can come in <laughs> I got my girlfriend coming in here hey, so. hey. hello what's up hello <laughs> welcome to the pod I call Paul she went to a row grande oh, oh nice. cool we AG. live okay. we live literally right next to AG so all right <laughs> yeah. um God, what was I? So, was I? Uh, the schools that were interested in you, oh, and I, I yeah. want to know if it, there was anything that, like, I know that you were 100% going to go play for your dad because you loved, you've been a Cal Poly fan, and obviously your dad is the head honcho. Yeah. But, so, when I was a freshman, I was super interested in, like, the um, ACC and SEC. Oh. Um, I really liked North Carolina. Uh, I remember, like, taking, like, virtual tours, just, like, 
online, uh, like Clemson and stuff, I'm just looking at the facilities. And I was on my own. That wasn't like a setup thing, but yeah, it was kind of because my buddy Cooper was like a really high prospect, uh, and he had a bunch of offers. And, um, I mean, I was like more in his shadow, um, and so I wanted to look at these schools and like he would get a phone call at lunch from UCLA and I'm just like sitting right next to him. I'm like, what the hell is like, Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, those are, I, um, uh, I don't really think, I mean, if I made my decision earlier, I probably would have decommitted and ended up committing to my dad. Cause I would have, yeah, I would have realized like, I think I need to play for him, but like Fullerton, I, um, I asked Chad Baum, who used to be like oh, an assistant man. there. I was like, are you not going to offer me? And he's like, I'll never offer you. Like, you're going to go play for your dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before I like, and then it kind of just like ticked. I was like, that's funny. Yeah. It's just like, I need a dad and need someone to tell me that I need to go play for my dad because that's what he deserves. Was there Absolutely. any school that like, if, if one school had offered you say like, you know, the greatest, you know, school ever UCLA, would you, um, <laughs> <laughs> Would you have gone? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I don't know. I like I like Sean Savage a lot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like when I was twelve, like I thought Vanderbilt was super cool. Um, University of Florida, but yeah. yeah. Mm. No, I would. I don't know. I there probably like no, Vanderbilt. Yeah. It makes, no, it's it just makes one of those things. We, we got you. Yeah. We got you. We are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, I, you know, like we'll stop I twisting know, your arm. I'm only in my area. But, and then yeah. after, like, after my summer of junior year, that's when I was like, all right, I'm, I need to start, like, acting like I'm the shit or else I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand up for that long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So that'll bring us into, we do different segments here on the podcast. So right now we're going to do what we call a power ranking segment. And right. so what we're going to do is we're going to give each of us will give an answer. You, you two about your best or favorite starting lineup. So essentially you're going to create a baseball team. So it could be players from now, players from the past, whoever. So do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. So I'm like the one guy in this entire podcast. I never played baseball. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really watch baseball that much growing up till about maybe mid 2000s, you know, like 2004, 2005. Um, So I wasn't just, it just never was my sport. Never played it. Um, but I became a Dodger fan. And so you'll kind of be able to tell that, um, in my list. Cause I tried to pick like my, f- just players, all that, team, basically. players that I like, not necessarily like all time greats, just all uh-huh. players that were like kind of my favorite players at positions. So, um, for catcher, I got Yachty, um, Yachty Merlina. I think he's obviously in my opinion, he's the best catcher of all time, but, um, you can debate that first base. I got Max Muncy. Um, second base, I got Orlando Hudson. Um, who, what? Ba- ba- back in the day, Orlando Hudson was like, <laughs> like one of my favorite players. Yeah. He's actually the main reason I came over and became a Dodger fan. He was on the Dodgers, and then the next, I think the next year after we got him, we got Manny. And I was like, all right, I like the Dodgers. And yeah. I started rolling with them. Um, at third base, I got Adrian Beltre. Uh, that's my guy. Shortstop, this one is mainly to piss off Joe. Um, and because I think he's better than Brandon Crawford, um, my shortstop's going to be Kike Hernandez. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Even Brooks is like, that's a load of shit. Yeah, that's yeah. terrible. I, I can't know, believe like it. I, I trust me. It's, it's, it's more of a, it's there, more of a sting. If he says, it's Kike. A dig. there's guys I would pick over Kike, but just for the, the base of the pod and just to talk <laughs> shit to Joe, it's yeah. Kike. Yeah, that's yeah. my guy. Yeah. Um, I like it a lot. Left field, and and also Kike is one of my top like three favorite players of all time. I I love Kike. Um, left field, I got Manny Ramirez. Um, that's my guy. He's oh, yeah. you know big fan. Um, right field, I got Jeff McNeil. Um, he's a good friend of ours. We we played high school basketball yeah. with him. Um, he's a local guy. I couldn't put him over Orlando Hudson at second, so I had to throw him at right field. <laughs> it's good thing Jeff <laughs> plays every position. Yeah. You know? everywhere right now. <laughs> um center field i got matt camp okay back before he blew his shoulder out and was actually a really good center fielder um starting pitcher i got the big unit randy johnson 
Um, he's my favorite pitcher to watch of all time. The guy was just an absolute stud. And he absolutely obliterated a bird. So <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> freaking cool. Um, Rest in peace. Yeah, right. And then uh, my closer's got to be Mariano. He's just that guy. Even though he was a Yankee, you, you can't not respect. Just no, like yeah. G, you can't not respect what he did. Um, so yeah. that's that's my guy. I'll, uh, I'll go. Kenny, I'll go. go ahead. Mine's the all-steroid team. <laughs> uh, I got Mike Piazza at catcher now. He was never proven, but he was in the rumblings of it, and he's Italian. That's pretty dope. And he was <laughs> Italian. And uh, Mark McGuire at first base because Big Mac man, self-explanatory. Uh, Robinson Cano at second base. I think he's still getting busted for PEDs. <laughs> he's literally sus- wasn't he suspended this year? <laughs> yeah. For that? He, yeah, he's been. Sure. Robinson Cano. Yeah. Um, third base, A Rod. Shortstop, Miguel Tejada. Uh, left field, Manny Ramirez, because Manny, yep. Manny's pretty awesome. And uh, I had a sweet Manny Wood shirt back in the day. <laughs> oh, that's the story we'll <laughs> tell you after this. Um, right field, Sammy Sosa, even though he's like kind of white now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but uh, Barry Bonds in the center field just because he's the home run uh, king. Um, uh, the little asterisk. 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 That's what it is. Oh, Homer Key. Roger Clemens is my starting pitcher, and Eric Gagne is my closing pitcher. Oh, that's it. You got really slim. I, I know. Sure. I was like, okay, we're going to have a lot of power in this lineup, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, not a lot of speed. Not a, <laughs> well, we don't need speed when you're trotting around the bases. Exactly. Dude, All so right. I got a funny story about Kenny's Manny Wood shirt. Oh, we, were going to a, a, we were going to a Dodger game, and you know when you got to like wait in that big line of cars to get into the stadium? So we're sitting there and, and we're waiting and this guy, the guys walk down and they're selling the shirts and whatnot. So they sell Kenny. They, they walk up and they go, hey, we got this Manny Wood shirt. And Kenny's like, oh, sweet. You got a, do you have a double X or an extra large or whatever, whatever yeah. it was? And they're like, yeah, 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 here you go. So they give it to Kenny. He pays them. We get into the stadium and he goes to put this thing on and it's an extra large everywhere except the length. It's a, fuck, it's a freaking belly shirt it's on him, dude. belly shirt. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! He went to like cheer, and you could see his titties. Yeah, it was hilarious, like dude. Right here, dude. The undercarriage. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the undercarriage. So I'll go with mine. I went all time San Francisco Giants just because that's what I wanted to do. So I'll go first base. Will the thrill? Can't beat Will Clark. It's what a stud. Second base Jeff Kent. Third uh, shortstop Brandon Crawford. Third base Matt Williams. Catching Buster Posey, that's a no-brainer. Actual shortstop. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Center field Willie Mays, right field Hunter Pence, just yeah. because. I like. Right. I like. Hunter Pence. <laughs> and I did it a little different. I didn't pick any relievers. I just picked five starters. I'll go Juan Marichal, Gaylord Perry, Tim Lincecum, Matt Kane, and Jason Schmidt. Wow, you didn't pick Gum- Bumgarner. That is. An absolute amazing. Uh, you know, I was more of a Tim Lincecum guy, dude. I, yeah, but all you've done is slob his knob for the last <laughs> ten yeah. years, talking about Mad Bum. Well, well yeah, right. when when, when Lincecum left, he was now we can, the number uh, one. So, do you, do you think you could muster up a muster up a little list? Yeah, I think I could. Okay. I'll go. Uh, yeah, you know, I need catching. Uh, I'm moving Frank Thomas to first base. Okay. Love it. There you go. Uh, Love Frank. That big hurt. Who do I want to play in second? Who's good? I might say Robinson Cano, too. Okay. <laughs> there okay. you go. Short stop, I'll go Derek Cheater. Yeah. Uh, third. I don't want to put A-Rod. Yeah, <laughs> there's plenty to choose from at third. Um, that was my all-steroid team. JT. Yeah. Who do I want at third? Uh, maybe move. I'm taking Chipper Jones at third. Uh, there, there you go. go. That's a great pick. Good pick. Uh, and then left field, I go Ted Williams. Uh, center, I'll go. Uh, I'm booting Willie Mays. I'm going Hank Aaron. Okay. I'm going Roberto Clemente and right. Yeah, Dude, that's Dude. a stud lineup. I'm not. I'm, that hey. is awesome. Bob Gibson. And then I would say Mariano Rivera, but 
Yeah, I'll say Mariano Rivera. There you go. Trevor Trevor Hoffman. Trevor 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 Hoffman. I was like, Trevor Hoffman. (laughs) Next best. Dude, my guy. That, yeah, I'm that not, was great. I was not expecting you to go old school with, with yeah, most of your list. I like it. The old school is a gay because of my dad. So. But I'm still, glad. that's yeah. awesome. I, yeah. I love when this works out that we all three, it, you know, it could be really boring with us just doing the same like category all time. We yeah. all did our own like like little. We do a little twist, twist. on it. So it always ends up working. I love the all steroid team. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I know. That's pretty dope. <laughs> I just came to me. I was like, dude, I should I just do an all steroid team. A lot of guys tearing muscles. Oh yeah. God, dude. Yeah, we're gonna need the good doctors for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that was our segment. So, 2020, you went to go play at Cal Poly, and I believe it was in the summer, right? It was summer ball that you got injured. Uh, it was Fall the ball. second weekend of inter squad, so like October. Yeah. 12th, I think that's when I blew my knee. So what exactly happened there? A hamstring yeah. injury, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's really rare. It's uh, yeah. Since 1970, there's only been 22 reported cases. Um, it's a uh, it's like the surgery I had is a complete knee uh, reconstruction, and it's the right side. So I think it's a posterior. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't know. She was a bio <laughs> major last year. So. She's like, I don't know. She, no, that's why she switched. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I had uh, the biceps femoris, which is there's three parts of the hamstring. Uh, and the biceps femoris on my right leg is on the outside of my knee. Um, and so it's like if you flex your leg while you're sitting down, it's the little uh, tendon that you can feel. Um, and it's uh, it's just. Basically, that tore off, and then my LCL, which connects to it, uh, tore off, and they were both 17 millimeters away from reattachment. Dude. Um, dang. So, but it's, all, it's, it's a really common injury. It's not common at all, but, like, where it usually happens in athletes is, like, uh, sprinters when they're getting out of the blocks. Um, it's like a too quick of a uh, hyperextension. There's the perfect amount of force going uh, yeah. the right way, and it just, like, it just snaps and my uh, trainer says like when they go through like all their training uh, in school for uh, all the medical stuff, they say like, that's not even a real injury. And it's like, uh, it's just something that they wow. talk about like in theory. Um, and so like that, that was about supposed to be, or I also broke my fibular head, which is uh, it's the bone that you can feel uh, that kind of pops out right under the knee. Jesus, dude. Damn. It's not a... Damn. Yeah, it's a pretty gruesome injury. Uh, oh. but how, how'd you do yeah, it? How, yeah, that's what I was... Yeah. Pretty simple. I was running out of the box, hit a ground ball a second, uh, and I slipped. Um, oh, and I was kind God. of falling forward, trying to pick myself back up to run. And uh, I overstrided on my right leg. And basically, it... Here, I'll just show you guys. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but... If I swing, hit it, I'm out of the box, and I overstride, and instead of the knee bending down, it goes this way. Oh, so, snap. Yeah. So the, everything on this side rips off, and then it breaks the figure of your head because it was attached. Uh, and then that's basically how it happens. And Dude. It's, uh, in well, reality, it's supposed to be like an eight-month uh, um, deal to get back on the field, but... It was four and a half months for me. Yeah, what yeah. a what a what a I'm kind not a steroid of guy, but what a, <laughs> yeah. that's a freak injury, kind of like that's weird. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, what was rehab like though? Like was uh, it tough? Worse, like nightmare for me. Yeah. It's in uh, rehab was. Um, I was there for five months. Um, it's. I was really lucky. I went to slow sports therapy by the airport um, and they did this thing called BFR. It's like blood flow restriction. And that's, uh, it had been out for two years. It's like a device they use in the military uh, when people have their limbs uh, blown off or shot off uh, and they put it right above the, uh, it's like a tourniquet. They just put it right above where the wound is and then it stops the blood. So that's basically what I had. Um, and I did that. I rehab three times a week. I probably had BFR twice a week. 
oh, like a week after I got surgery, I started rehab and it was like leg raises, um, no weight. And you put this thing on and like, you know, you can just lift your legs a thousand times if you want to, but since there's no oxygen going to your blood or no oxygen in the blood, uh, that goes down your leg. Um, and it just basically feels like you're doing a ton of weight with no weight at all. So it's like a, it's kind of like a cheat in order to uh, make your muscle grow twice as fast because it doesn't have oxygen. Gotcha. Oh wow! Yeah, it's like pretty technology, it's pretty, baby. I'm super yeah. like educated in it now because yeah. it's just like I'm complaining the whole time. So I think that like it's like depressing to get hurt, but that's like the worst pain I've ever had in my life. Um, and it was like four and five months of doing it, um, but it's like just this little machine and you go around and like by I do leg raises and you put weight on for a little bit, but you do about like 60 reps. And by the 60th, like you're trying to hold back tears. It's like, yeah, yeah, Yeah. like I think I'm a tough person. It's just something that, um, it's pretty hard to go through, but you do like deadlifts and front squats. And if, you know, like if you hold your arm, uh, for like 20 or for like two minutes, it starts going like a little purple. Or like yeah. if you hold your breath, your face gets a little um, discolored. Like my whole leg is like dark purple. Holy uh, cow! My left one is like normal and like yeah, it's like you you get up, you're like lightheaded, and you think like you're like you want to just die. But yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. I hate it. Like I mean, it's just like not something that well, man. I can avoid. Well, knee but, knee pain is the worst. Cause I've blown both my knees out. I, yeah. I, I blew my right one out um, my junior year of high school, and the doctor told me that uh, he, like, misread my MRI, no and, way, he, really? and he goes, oh, you strained all your muscles, but you should be good to go in about a month. So I tell all my friends, I'm good to go in a month. So I'm, like, nope. I'm, I'm rehabbing on this thing, um, thinking I just have strained muscles, and I'm like, why the hell is it not getting better? So I... I go back in and I see the doctor and he's like, dude, you fractured your kneecap in half. You have a torn, you have a torn patella. You have a torn, partially torn MCL and a completely torn PCL and LCL. And I'm like, cool. So I'm not good to go. And he's like, and he's like, well, you should have had surgery. He's like, but everything is just healed back together its own way. He's like, like, uh, the scar tissue takes like two weeks yeah. until it starts going. And then by then you're screwed. And so that's when he was like, honestly, your knee is, has healed itself back together pretty much. He's like, but you're going to have a lot of problems when you get older. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. So I'm starting to feel those now. Now that I, I hit 30, <laughs> I, I wake up and I'm like, fuck, my knee hurts. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, in, yeah. in fact, it, it just, it does show how mentally tough both of you are because you came back and rocked football senior year. And that was junior year, so you rocked football senior year, and you obviously we know the story for you. So, I mean, that's it's just a mental, it's just a check of it, mental toughness, you, and the, and the comeback has to be better than the setback, greater than the setback. Yeah. That's you pretty what it much comes down to just got to block it out. Like, is it it hurt? And okay, how long did it take for you to trust it? Because for me, I remember I could run probably about two and a half months after this actual injury, but I couldn't trust it until about four months i uh i started running after three and a half months and i would like if i ran by myself and i did sprints like i couldn't look uh i couldn't look straight ahead I had to um, look down right? i'd always look down on my leg to see because i was too scared of it hyperextending but like there's like some weird stuff so i did a force plate test with like weight to like squat and I'd be like, I'm putting all my weight on my right leg. Like, and they're reading it. They're like, no, you have 70% of your weight on your left leg, and like 30 on your right. And I'm just like, it's like your mind is trying to, uh, keep yourself safe because it knows it's hurt. Um, yep. And then like the last thing was like, I would, uh, after rehab, I would like lay down uh, on my stomach on the table. And then, uh, like I would push myself off a little bit and I'd always feel like my, right leg was like drooping down further than my left so i always felt like it was like super uh wiggly and like i had like it was so funny like i had my trainer take a photo of it and like they're the exact same and i'm just yeah. like it's just like that's how powerful the mind is yeah, yeah it's it's definitely that was that was by far the hardest thing for me was to trust my knee because because i was playing defensive line 
you yes. know? And so I got guys rolling around my legs all the time and it yeah. was just, it took me forever to be like comfortable. Like, all right, it's, it's healthy enough. I can play. It's been passed by all the doctors. I've gotten my MRIs, like you're good to go. And, and it, it finally, it was, it was actually week one. Cause I was, I was tripping all year and all, right. all off season. And then week one, I actually played a game on it. And once I played a game and, and you know, the difference when you're in practice, you can still kind of think about your injury because you're not so locked in. But yeah. when you get into a game, all you're thinking about is the game. You're like, I need to do this. This is my, this is my assignment. I got to do this. And I realized while I was doing that, like, you know what? I'm all right. Cause I didn't even think about my knee and I went and played. I did all the cuts yeah. I needed to do. And that yeah. right, that right there gave me the confidence watching myself on film and seeing that I, I was, just as fast, if not faster, um, with the, after the injury, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm good to go. I was slow when I got back, really slow. <laughs> fast, but I was really slow when I got back. So, well, this was like a year after. Yeah. So like, oh, okay. like, cause yeah, I, I had to set out my whole senior. I, my junior year, I came back and I played like three plays in a game just to say I, I played football my junior year, but <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't anything. Um, I didn't really get fully like, playing again until um my senior year when i started football and all that right so that's why that's why i was faster when i came back i was slow as hell you know <laughs> yeah. i ran like a i ran like a four eight forty <laughs> before really? and then afterwards i was running like five twos and all that stuff and i think i got it up to like a four nine um after my knee but that was the best i could get it you know so um, that wasn't, though so that appeared to be a season ending injury. You actually came back and played a few games, right? Or had a couple of bats. Uh, yeah. So I came back too early for sure. Um, I wanted to get on the field, but I wasn't ready. Uh, but I got cleared and I pinch hit against Baylor on like a Friday night. I was like, I think, um, I want to say that was like March uh, eighth or something like that, and then I pinch hit. A, I struck out on three pitches. Or, yeah, three pitches. I got three sliders. Sat down. Uh, that's shitty. But <laughs> on Sunday I came and, and I had another pinch hit. Um, and then on that, after this series was over, on uh, we were supposed to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against Oklahoma, and they were coming to us. On Wednesday, I was, I mean, I was told that I was going to start it short. And then on Thursday morning, which is when we were supposed to have our game, um, everything got canceled due to COVID. Uh, so that would have been my first uh, defensive start. It was kind of a blessing, right. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I have to think of it as like, and I get told that a lot. Uh, I was getting told that a lot during rehab. It's, uh, it's something that I need to come back better from. And, uh, in the long run, it should benefit me uh, for many different reasons. Right. So what you're saying is your freshman year, you hit 500. <laughs> That's right. With like a 50% strikeout rate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but I hit double, so. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. But then you came back. So with all the COVID And stuff, the comeback. Yeah. So all the COVID stuff, um, I'm sure that – because we've interviewed the Cal Poly basketball team as well. So they had their own struggles with COVID, um, just different protocols and different things. And they were like inside of the gym. So um, did you guys have any practices during that time or was everything just kind of shut down? Um, everything was canceled. Um, we moved like our, uh, our locker room was on the first base side uh, because on the third base side, we we're getting the new uh, clubhouse right and so it's called the lab it's like just like a little it's not that small actually but it's a, a little building that has a we more like changed it to be a weight room and then we had it as a locker room and then once COVID hit we changed it back to a weight room uh and so like that day like we started uh getting everything put together because i mean the coaches knew that we weren't going to be up back on the field for a while uh and then um, we had a bunch of restrictions, uh, like going to summer ball. Uh, like only I played in the Northwoods. I was supposed to go to the Cape Cod League. The Cape Cod League got canceled. Um, and then like the West Coast League was canceled. I played in that the year before. Uh, but I got to play in the Northwoods, and there was a like pretty 
uh, a lot of restrictions. And then the worst was like coming back to slow uh, for the next year. It was like everything online. Um, yeah. You get a COVID test two times a week. And, like and you're on the field, you're getting uh, – people are watching you from like uh, the uh, athletic department to make sure that you got like your mask on. So it was like – yeah, it's pretty hardcore. Like binoculars. But you had to have your mask on on the field? Uh, I had my mask on the field because it kept me warm, uh, like for inner squads and stuff, just like the gator. Got but, you. Uh, yeah. I was like a – I don't like wearing the mask at all, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't but, know anyone who does. <laughs> yeah, I don't like – <laughs> We were like super fortunate because like I got COVID uh, during winter break. Um last year and so like i didn't have to sit out or anything and, like uh, none of i think we had like two people that were exposed uh and that goes for like the whole year and like we never got uh shut down for anything uh that year so it was pretty good on our part that's pretty remarkable yeah, for seriously. for the way everything went last year and how many games had to get canceled yeah exactly yeah that's crazy so you came back um, you guys went 31 and 25 last season. Uh, you hit 342, 76 hits, 27 doubles, three triples, 10 home runs, and 57 RBIs. Man, you tore it up, and it was awesome. I didn't make it to a game last year, but I always followed you guys on Instagram, like always checking, like, hey, they're playing UCLA today. They're playing, yeah. you know, whoever. And just like, you guys won a lot of series, like, you know, two of yeah. three, that type of stuff. So it was glad, it was nice to like see you guys. If I remember, good. there's a little hiccup like in the middle of the season where you had a little losing patch, but you picked it up a little bit. Uh, I think we lost like eight straight. Yeah. Uh, so I would um, always listen on the radio. So I'd be yeah. chilling. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a lot of good series to start it off. Um, I think we went. I got um, my freshman, or sorry, uh, our first game, first four games were against Nevada. Uh, I think we went like one and three, and then we played USC the next weekend, one, two, or three. Then we play um, Utah Valley, and we sweep, and then we play UCLA two out of three. Uh, and then we had a yeah. few good series, and then like I think we hit the rough patch, Santa Barbara, uh, and then Bakersfield. I got swept by Bakersfield, which is beyond myself. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. the old road runners. Yeah, oh. but um, uh, and then we picked it up a little later, and then the last three weekends of series was yeah. just how we wanted it to be in the middle. Um, yeah. But we were really good at start, really good at the end, um, and we played some. Uh, really good teams. That kind of goes unheard of for Big West baseball because right. uh, it's not a Power Five or anything. But yeah. there's a, a quite a few teams in the Big West that can hold their own against Pack and mm. uh, Big Twelve, Big Ten. Yeah, yeah. They showed. Well, that you know that last season came with some pretty nice hardware for you, though. I mean, Big West first team. You were what National Co Freshman Player of the Year, if they would said, and. Um, Co-player of the year in the conference too, correct? Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty awesome, bro. Thank you, appreciate it. Those, all yeah, those so. honors, man, it just shows how like a shows journey, man. Journey ain't over, but it's picking up some hardware along the way ain't too bad, eh? <laughs> I was yeah, a exactly. I was a second team all league high school athlete, so I can't imagine <laughs> having it at the Division One national <laughs> level. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, that yeah. is that's big Perfect. deal, man. No, he don't know what you mean. He only yeah. does yeah. first team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's only first team. <laughs> It was skewed. It was biased. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a that was a goal for me, uh, for an individual standpoint. Um, but I always say it doesn't really matter uh, how I do; it's how the team does. And, yeah. I mean, if I'm going to hit one twenty and we win the college world series, or we make it really far along, I'd rather do that than hit four hundred. Absolutely, hundred. Definitely. So um, this summer you had the opportunity to play for the Team USA collegiate team. Um, tell us about that experience. Where'd you guys play? How'd you guys do? Because um, that's all n new to us. We didn't. I knew that there was like a college team, but I thought it was just like um, just like one team. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, how'd that go? The, the collegiate national team was. Uh... It was supposed to be 48 players uh, for team trials. 
and then uh, you'd play each other for a little bit, and then they'd cut it down uh, to about 28. But uh, And then you would go play in Cuba. Uh, I was supposed to go in Cuba. Uh, we'd play like Chinese Taipei, uh, yeah. I think Japan, and then the DR in Cuba. Uh, but since they cut off uh, all the – they had all the restrictions for flying and uh, going to other countries because of COVID. Uh, so they ended up just taking the 48 players that were for trials. Um, and that was considered Team USA uh, for the collegiate national team. And we played 11 games against each other. Uh, it was called Stars and Stripes. And then okay. I was on the Stars team. And it's funny because, like, it was supposed to be East versus West. Uh, and it was East versus West, but like me and Jacob Barry were both the, uh, he was one of the uh, freshman of the year guys with me. He was also okay. on uh, on the uh, uh, East team. Too cool. But uh, we had like a bunch of great players on our team and uh, played in North Carolina, which is in Cary, which is where the uh, national team complex is. Right. And, and we went travel to. Uh, I say somewhere in Tennessee, Kingsbury. Yeah, Kingsbury, Tennessee. Uh, and it was like played five or six games. And then we went to uh, Blacksburg, Virginia, which is where Virginia Tech is. Yeah, gotcha. Games, and then uh, went back to North Carolina uh, and played the uh, – uh, the uh, we played against each other one more time. And then uh, we played the – um, Olympic team, uh, and that was a three game series and they cut a bunch of players, um, uh, to play them. And, uh, we went national team training complex first game. And then second game, we went to, um, the Durham Bowl stadium. Super cool. <laughs> super oh, cool. heck yeah. That's awesome. And then third, <laughs> game, uh, third game was, uh, back at the, uh, training complex. So this is a really cool experience. Um, yeah, it's like Team USA is like just wearing USA cocktail chest yeah. just like elevates what, how you think about yourself and your confidence. And I mean, it's a really cool experience. And I had success while I was there. And I had a bunch of guys I had no clue who they were. And then you end up being best friends with them. And that's uh, super touch, awesome, bro. That's kind of what I think. Is <laughs> that's the big thing is like wearing the stars and stripes. Like that's, yeah. you know, that's, I think kind of a dream of every athlete, the red, white, and the blue baby is, is to yeah. always have to, you know, you want to represent your country. You even hear, you know, like Kobe and LeBron guys like that. They're like, you know, yeah. the NBA championships are cool, but I hold near and dear the gold medals. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a lot cooler to represent your country than anything else. And I mean, that's uh, something that I was working towards for a long time to so like play for team USA. And uh, when I, f- I found out like the fourth week of the season, um, after the UCLA series, I was going to be on that team. So pretty, uh, it was pretty emotional. For pretty me. Yeah, that's pretty that's amazing, epic, dude. Man. Do you got a couple of your jerseys? Uh, yeah, I have a an all white one with the USA. Oh, and then this year sick. they changed it to Nike instead of Majestic. That's cool. Uh, so I got like the big swoosh, and then um, I was number six, and then I have another older uh, USA one that's Majestic white. Uh, and then I don't know, I think somewhere, I think it got sent back to my house. Uh, but I have like the Navy one that just came out. Uh, uh, they didn't have that before uh, in Nike. So it's it pretty cool, yeah. There's, that's sick, there, dude. Heck yeah. I think those are the coolest jerseys ever. Hell yeah, right. dude. 100%. All right, so I got to ask, um, what are like some of your best memories playing for your dad? Um... The one that always comes up is like hitting a grand slam, uh, high fiving him. Uh, I hit a grand slam against four ten. Uh, just pretty cool. Just uh, like giving him a high five, and he'll never show emotion on the field. Uh, but I know kind of what he's feeling uh, at the moment. He was pumped for his boy. Yeah, the, that, oh, was, yeah. that was a really cool experience. Then getting my first hit um, was like really emotional. I remember, like, coming up to the bat against Baylor. That's not why I struck out. But uh, when I came up to bat, I had, like, tears in my eyes. And I'm just, like, it was super emotional. Um, like, hearing my name getting called and being on deck, like, that's, uh, like, 
you never like think it's gonna come but right when you're there it's like wow this came really quick well you're on wow. d1 baseball yeah. like you officially made yeah. it to the the college show you know what yeah. i mean just like yeah that's what you go to bed thinking about yeah. playing baseball and for me it was playing for my dad hell yeah man i said yeah i just probably that and when i got my first hit on sunday i uh, gave him knuckles when i i got pinch ran for uh, right after so he was coaching third and i gave him knuckles and that was uh that's that's the emotional side of uh, sports for me yeah for sure we'll say so when you hit that slammer did you look over at the Fullerton coach and be like, you should have offered me? <laughs> no, no, he wasn't there by then. Uh, I, uh, that was like, uh, that pitcher that came in, he was a freshman, and that was his first pitch he threw. Uh, no. He threw one pitch. I have nine to this day. I don't know how I hit it. Bye-bye. Like bye. spider. Uh, I just... Uh, happened and i came back and dug out like how the hell did i do that (laughs) things are just like it's just something that was meant to be oh yeah man yeah so uh speaking of still speaking of poly uh you got another season coming up here right um what are some expectations you have for the team dude what's the outlook i'm looking to win the big west first of all uh that's i don't like looking down the road that far um but I uh, really want to go to Omaha, and then I think I mean, by far right now we have a really – I always see myself uh, and the team is having a good chance. Um, and then I'd probably say I don't want to lose more than 15 games for sure. So um, I think one of the cool things about like Arkansas last year is they never lost a series um, uh, before the playoffs, and that's kind of what I think we should be able to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Do you have a lot of guys coming back? What's up? A lot of guys coming back. Um, yeah, actually, we we're like this year we we're pretty old. Um, we had a couple. We had a grad transfer from Cal and uh, some JUCO guys, and um, we're pretty old this year. So, but they're a good, pretty good group of guys that have been here for a while. Heck so yeah. what you're saying is, is we should be excited about this year for Cal Poly. <laughs> Sure, yeah. Hell what yeah. you're saying never, is I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to go raise some hell in Kruko's clubhouse. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that all-you-can-drink IPAs. Well, I got up to like nine one time on that shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. You'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be seeing. I had a DD. I so have, have some fun. Yeah, no. Nah, Definitely. You'll, you'll be seeing this now. logo in yeah. the outfield a little bit. Yeah. We'll come My, watch uh, you for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there for a few games for sure. My dad's a alum for Fullerton, so we always like going to a couple games when you guys play at home, usually. But yeah, well, if you guys have any tickets, let me know because I can handle that stuff. Okay, my I'll guy, we got we like yeah, that for sure. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, the quick hitter. Yeah, I, no, I want to ask. Yeah, go ahead. You got the MLB draft, um, obviously next year. Is that something you're kind of thinking is a next year yeah. thing, or are you thinking maybe down the road? Um. Yeah, so are you saying like if I want to sign this year? Well, yeah, if you think if you think when you get year. drafted um, this year, do you think this will be the one that you kind of officially take the offer? Yeah, so um, after I made my decision out of high school, it's like my dad told me you're here for three years, and then I don't want you here for a fourth year. There you uh, go. It's, uh, and that's how I want it. It's kind of how it's going to work out. Uh, I plan on signing this year. Uh, all it takes is one team to uh, value you for what you have to offer. So that's all that matters. Yeah, the Dodgers. I don't know. Hopefully, if if uh, the way it works out, I would probably not go to the Dodgers because I want to be a higher draft pick. Yeah. Here, but, uh, <laughs> Were you? Um, I would, yeah. That was the three teams I I had like the Diamondbacks, Cubs, and Dodgers. Yeah. Those are the teams I was signed up out of high school. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, we talking. About. So I was gonna ask yeah. if had any team drafted you? What? So it would have been Dodgers, Cubs, and yeah, Dodgers, Cubs, yeah. and Diamondbacks. Okay. Uh, spring training in Arizona. Uh, they all have like really good um, development for hitters. Uh, Dodgers. Uh, I mean, this they, just, they have a great. I actually system. know Our one of the. Yeah. I know farm. one of their coaches. He's actually a hitting coach. He used to coach at Bakersfield College. His name's okay. Dylan Nashaka and. Um, dude is an absolute stud. He, I think he coaches single A at Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, um, but I know he's got the hookup during spring yeah. training. Got some good things to 
you know, coming up, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to seeing yeah. you this year, my guy. Thank you. Man, I, I just love poly baseball games. Though. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just fun to go to. All right, last but not least, um, this is a question we've uh, been asking a lot of our guests recently. Um, is there anyone that you would recommend to come on the podcast? Who would be a good fit for us, man? Always um, looking for I'd uh, probably say Cooper Benson. Uh, yeah. You wanted that. I was going to ask you. <laughs> well, uh, put out a good word for us, bud. What's up? <laughs> put out a good word for us. Yeah, he's uh, – did you already DM him or something? I haven't yet. I was going to later on after. Um, I just wanted to see what you you had yeah, to say. We wanted to see what you would but, say uh, on this question. He got drafted, I, right? I don't have you guys out. He's not a. He's not the. Uh, like I'm not really either. But, the media, uh, so you know. The, the media side of all that stuff. Yeah. But, right. Um, he. Um, I mean, if I tell him, he'll get on there. Hell yeah, man. He's my brother, so. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Hook my us guy. Up. Well, yeah. Brooks Lee, man, thanks for joining us. Uh, this has been amazing. Yeah, man. thank been, you, man. We really time. appreciate it. Thanks for sharing a little bit of everything, man. We look forward to uh, Cal Poly's success on coming season, man, and, and years, too, as the draft comes. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really oh, appreciate it. Thank you, man. We'll keep, I, we'll keep in touch. Right yeah, hell yeah. Hey, also, mid-season, if you, if you want, you know, come on and give us, like, a mid-season report, and we can just kind of talk about how it's yeah, going and stuff. Sure. You know what I mean? Great, man. Cool. All right, brother. Well, you, have, right, a, you have yourself a great night, man. Appreciate it. Right. I'm going to go to like Dell's or something tonight. So. There you yeah. go. There you go. <laughs> GG's, baby. GG's Take it easy, out. man.